Okay, everybody, I'm back finally after about a two year absence. Uh, moved to South Carolina in Surfside Beach. I am about two blocks from the ocean, so I have to take real good care of the cast iron bed and everything because if you don't keep it coated with WD-40 or a marine water repellent, rust repellent, it will rust. Um, what I've got here is a piece of a Bradford pear tree. Um, you can see that where the woodpecker or sapsucker has gone in and drilled little holes in there, I don't think any of those will be there. But what I'm going to make today is uh, natural edged bowl. Hopefully the bark will stay on. This piece of wood is about a year old. It was removed from the front of our house and I saved the trunk. Um, as you can see the bark on the tree is going this way. So this piece was actually part of the tree that was standing up. I took my chainsaw and cut down the sides to get the heartwood out and uh, even though this piece is about like I say has been cut about a year uh, there's no checking uh, no cracks that I can see uh, that's because I, it's uh, what's known as quarter sawn um, it's not real round but like I say I took my chainsaw um, and cut this piece out uh, then took the bandsaw and tried to round it up as best to, that I could the bowl as you can see I made a pencil line here that's a, uh, approximately as big as I can get the bowl uh, it's, see it's real wide on this side and it gets narrow here comes wide again and then gets very narrow right here so we'll see what it what the final product turns out like. Uh, one good thing about making a one-of-a-kind item, you don't have to try to match it up with anything. So that's what I love, I think, most about lathe turning. I've got my tools all sharpened up. Everything is ready to go. I mounted it with uh, my large faceplate. I've got about 10 2-inch screws driven through the faceplate into the blank so hopefully it'll hold and also I will be using the tailstock to help hold it on until I get it roughed out. First part, first thing I'll do of course is round the sides of it. Uh, I'll turn a tenon down on this end and then flip it around and this is actually the bottom of the bowl. This will be the top and like I say hopefully we can save some of the bark. That always makes for an interesting project. But I'll get the camera set up and we'll get ready to go. Okay, I've got it running at about 264 RPM. Uh, I turn it up as far as I can until it starts shaking and then I back it off till it runs pretty smoothly. Uh, as it gets more round, I'll be able to speed it up, of course. I do have on my face shield and that is very important because that wood can fly off of there a whole lot quicker than I can move. So this is just an extra precaution. So we're going to start with the gouge. We've got it set just a little bit above center. Just take very small chunks out of it. Very small shavings. If you can do it, of course, it will become more rounded. Stop it here and stop filming here. When I get it a little more round, I'll get it. I will resume filming. Okay, about an hour into the project now. I've pretty much got it rounded off, as you can see, and notice the chips or the shavings are a whole lot longer because you're cutting more of it off as you go around. So now what I'll be doing is 
flattening the bottom side of it and also turning the tenon so that I can turn it around and mount it to in my one-way chuck. I always have to keep uh, tightening the, the tailstock because it will be in off balance as it was it will wear that hole out bigger and there's a possibility of it moving. We don't want that to happen. Uh, I'm running at about 450 RPM now. Uh, not too much vibration but it, there is some caused by this and there will be some because of the way the just the curvature of the front part of or the bark side of the wood. So we'll get started on this. I'll get it set up and get it running and we'll come back. Okay, let's try some turning. This is my carbide cutter. It's got a small edge and a large edge. You can turn this around, whichever, if you're doing detail work with this side. Um, I hope I'm not blocking too much, but you always want to try to keep your tool rest as close to the work as possible, and don't be aggressive, especially when it's as uneven as it is. Just take You can see the chips here, the shavings are much longer than they will be when we get down here. Because you just have smaller sections of the wood. Oh, and in case any of this looks backward to you, I'm left-handed, so I don't know if that makes any difference on how I hold the tools or not, but um, anyway, I've always been left-handed. So I'm going to go ahead and do some more flattening on this, and we will come back. Okay, I'm starting to round up the bottom of the bowl. I've got it uh, 688 RPM now. So we'll do a little cut, and I'm using the, again using the gouge. I don't have a bigger gouge, that's why I use this little small one, but it works better than nothing. And these are, most of them are push cuts. I'm just pushing up toward the top of the bowl. Again, being very gentle with it. See how long the chips are, the shavings. doing this till I get the bottom of the bowl flat except uh, and the tenon will be protruding and the chips coming off the shavings coming off of here get warm that's why you, I don't like to let them build up on my hand But I will continue this until I get it rounded and then we'll flip it around and work on the inside. Okay, I've got that sharp, the corner off of here with the tenon protruding. Um, I'm going to go ahead and continue rounding this up over and I think the front of the bowl I'm going to have come down a little bit like this and then hollow out from the inside. It's coming out very nice. This, that carbide scraper is doing a real good job. I'm noticing that there is still quite a bit of moisture even after a year. You can see these. But you never know what you're going to find inside a log until you start cutting it away but I will I will keep rounding and I'll show you how I do that so we'll come back okay what I'm doing is turning down the sides of the bowl just smoothing them down a little bit taking out very little pieces of it very light cut 
because I've learned that the less ridges and gouges you have in a piece, the less sanding you'll do. And sanding, to me, is not the most fun. I'm going to go ahead up here and on this other side, I know you can't see it, start turning down the top lip of the ball. I'm into the bark area. Got my tool resting up against my chest and I'm letting it pivot on this hand here. Alright, I will continue with this and when we get it turned around, we'll let you see what it looks like. Okay, day two, I've gotten it pretty well sanded. I'm not going to finish it yet. I'll wait till I get it all finished. But on uh, closer thought, I've decided to cut this uh, tenon off and make a dovetailed mortise and mount the jaws from the inside pushing out instead of trying to grab it after I get it hollowed out because there's, as uneven as this bowl is, there'd be no way that my jumbo jaws could hold it. So I'll go ahead and get that done and I will be show you the finish when I get the mortise made. Okay, I've got the tenon cut off, my mortise, dovetail mortise. What I'll do now is mount my mount turn this around and mount it into my one-way chuck like this. You have to run a little bit slower speed, but now I can finish everything from the inside. I've already sanded all this. I even like to sand out the bottom because people will look at it. So I like to go ahead and finish that anyway. This will stay here. I made a little foot for the bowl so it'll sit level. So we'll get it turned around, mounted up, and we'll be back. Okay, we have remounted it to the one-way chuck, which is now in the headstock. Seems to be holding pretty good. As a time-saving measure, I'm going to take a two-inch Forstner bit and drill out some of the wood. That'll also help me set the depth of the bowl. Then I'm going to put in a two-and-three-quarter inch Forstner bit and do the same. I didn't want to start out with the big one because it's may cause too much friction but let's start this up some people might say that's cheating but it's a time-saving device for me and in the end nobody's going to know how you did it anyway but you get the idea I need to tighten that bit. I'll go ahead and do this and then we'll come back. Okay, I got the whole board out here, as you can see, about uh, four inches down, two and three quarter inches wide, and I'll be using a combination of tools to hollow out the inside. Uh, bowl gouges, scrapers, but I've already started a little bit on this and it's coming out pretty nicely. You can see one of the couple of the woodpecker holes but they'll be gone but there'll be some others preserved around the sides so that ought to be pretty interesting don't want to go too fast here I've got it at about close to 500 just come in easy with the bowl scraper I like to start on the outside or the inside and work toward the out I don't know that there's really any right or wrong way I'm sure there's Professionals probably have one, but since I'm not one, I can just do what I want. But 
that's the way it's going to go. And I'll keep working on this. This will take a while. And come back and show you the progress. All right, we're getting closer and closer. Like I said, it's just a matter of cutting out this material here. You can see the bottom down in here. And I made a mistake yesterday. This is not carbide, it's high speed steel. But it works good anyway, but I just do have to keep sharpening it, so. Because you always want as sharp a tool as possible. But it looks like it's coming out pretty good. I will continue working on it and come back. All right, we're getting toward the end of the hollowing out process. I've got the bottom set where I want it. I don't want to go any deeper. I'm afraid I'll come through on the other side. But I can feel that this area right here is still thick and it needs to be trimmed out. So, but you take very, very, very thin passes so you don't get any catches. Very small ribbons are coming off. A catch at this point might be disastrous. Not the end of the world, but it might be the end of this soul. Okay. We'll come back again when um, I get a little further along. So now we're finished hollowing it out. It is very smooth because of the scraper that I used, but there is some rough parts of the end grain right here and over here. That's a, that bark inclusion that you can see from the other side right there. But sanding will take care of that. There's no noticeable ridges inside of it, which is good though you can sand them off, but I was able to save a lot of the bark for the edge. Came out very nice. It'll look even prettier once I get the finish on it. I'll probably use a high speed friction polish, but I've got to sand down the inside and we will come back. And here we have the finished product. This is the bottom of it. As you can see, the mortise, dovetail mortise, is still on there, but the bowl came out very nice. That Mylan's friction polish is excellent. Let me show you what the inside of it looks like. And that's the inside. Came out pretty smooth. There's the, some of the bark, the bark inclusion. And we'll go around on the other side, but this has been a great project. I'm glad to be back. Thank you for taking the time to look at this video. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel. And hopefully before too long, I'll be putting up more videos. Thank you for watching. From Surfside Beach, South Carolina, thank you.